Today we will learn how to be able to code on the iPad Pro using the Raspberry Pi 4. Why the Raspberry Pi 4? Because it has USB-C support and an updated bootloader which enables the low power mode for the USB hardware, also allows the enabling of network boot and enables data over USB-C port. This makes Pi 4 a very powerful gadget to carry next to your iPad as you don't need to pay cloud solution or rely on any internet connectivity to be able to use your iPad for coding. Now there are a few prerequisites before we start and I will get categorize them into hardware requirements and software requirements. As far as hardware requirements go, you will need a Raspberry Pi 4, obviously, a USB-C cable, and be careful here as not all USB-C cables work, and the Apple ones for sure do not work. I use Anchor Powerline Plus 3. I will add below in the description some links to help you finding the right one. And finally, you will need an SD card with at least 32 gigabytes of memory. Why at least 32 gigabytes? Because we will need to install some software on the Pi. Software requirements. We need VNC for iPad to connect to the graphical user interface on the Pi. We will not use this in this video, but but there are plenty of tutorials for that in case you are actually interested. Blink SSH on your iPad to connect via the command line to the Pi. And for your Mac, you will need Raspberry Pi Imager to burn the OS image on your SD card. Now let's set up your Raspberry Pi 4. Before we go along with that, I just want to mention that by connecting to code server on your Raspberry Pi, you will be able to code in any language because basically you'll connect to code server via the browser. So every everything in terms of language requirements and IDE requirements will sit on your Raspberry Pi. Now the first step we need to do is to download the Raspberry Pi Imager. You see here the website, I have already downloaded it but you can proceed and download it from here and just install it on your operating system. I use macOS so I will download the Raspberry Pi Imager for macOS. Once the Raspberry Pi Imager is actually installed on your machine, just insert your SD card into your SD card reader and if you, your SD card is not new or you just want to format it you can always go here at the bottom of the list and use erase and format card as FAT32. I've also done that so now let's install the Raspberry Pi. I go with the desktop version and I recommend you to do the same in case you want to use VNC. You can also go with the light version as we will mostly use the SSH but I prefer to go with the desktop just in case. Now I'm going to choose my SSD card and then I'm gonna press right and this will take a while if you're on the Mac OS it will ask you to put the password go ahead and place it in and then the writing will start <laughs> system is burned, the SD card will be automatically ejected. Take it out and insert it again into your laptop's SD card reader because there are two more things we need to do before we proceed to the iPad. First thing we need to do is to write an empty SSH file to the Raspberry Pi. So we will do that by writing touch volumes normally the SD card will be called boot and here we will just write an empty SSH file. And the second thing we need to do, we just need to create a file called WPA supplicant just for your Raspberry Pi to be able to connect to your Wi-Fi connection. So I'm gonna say volumes boot and here you will have to write the following content. By the way, you don't have to type everything. I will link below my GitHub repository where I wrote all these instructions and then you can copy paste from there. So you don't have to type everything, of course. Yeah, and here for the country, put the country you are in. I am in Netherlands, but check for your country code. You can Google it and then put that country code there. And for the SSID and the PS key, put the SSID name of your Wi-Fi router and the PS key password. 
password of your router as well. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. After you're done with that, just safely eject the SD card and insert it into your Raspberry Pi. And then we will see how we, we connect the Raspberry Pi to the iPad using the USB-C cable. Now after you connect your Raspberry Pi to the iPad, it will boot up. So let it boot for a minute to be sure and fire up the Blink terminal just like you see on my screen. And now to SSH to the Raspberry Pi, all you have to do is just SSH Pi, which is the user for the Raspberry Pi, at Raspberry Pi, which is the default name of the Raspberry Pi, but you can change it, I'll show you later. But anyway, you can find it online. If I forget, Raspberry Pi dot local, so that we can connect to the Raspberry Pi. You'll be prompted with the password. The password, the default password is Raspberry. You can also change it in the same setup screen. You will find more details on my GitHub page that I will link below. Now let's activate VNC. It's just for you to know how to do it. And then after that, if you'll need to use VNC forward, you can find a lot of tutorials online. But for now, let's go into the configuration. And for that, we have to do sudo raspi.config and you're prompted with this. So first thing you need to make sure is that the localization options are correct. So you have to go here in the localization options and in the time zone. And for the time zone, you need to choose your continent, Europe in my case, and the correct time zone. In my case, it was London, but it was wrong because I live in Amsterdam. So then you can select Amsterdam. And then to activate VNC, all you have to do is go to display options. Oh, sorry, it's not display options. Interface options, VNC. You will activate it. Okay, and then you can go to finish and that's it. VNC is activated and as you can see the locale is set in my case to Amsterdam and once you change it you'll see it displayed correctly for your time zone. Now let's update the Pi OS and install the necessary packages. Once again all these commands that you'll see here you can find them on my github page that will be linked below. So let's update. This will take a moment. Good, the update is done. Now let's upgrade. <laughs> DNS mask and I will also install Vim to edit files. If you're not comfortable with Vim, you can use Nano, which comes already installed with the Pi OS, but I prefer to install Vim. Cool, now we have the basics installed. Next step is to set up Raspberry Pi as a USB-C gadget and like that it will show up as a Ethernet device on the iPad. So first command we need to do is to add the following line into your config txt and you can see i get permission denied now if this happens to you as well it might not but if it does you need to configure the access to this file what i do know is not the safest way but anyway it's only you who will access this raspberry pi
now we can start setting up code server for Raspberry Pi. Before we do that, we need to install Node.js and before you install Node.js, you need to see what type of processor do you have, what type of model your processor is, so you know which type of Node.js you install. To do that, just run uname-m and you see in my case I have ARM7. Then what we need to do is go to the Node.js download page, you'll have the link in the GitHub page and I will just copy the URL of the Node.js distribution specific for your processor and now we will download it wget as you can see here it ends with xz and i need a gz so i'm gonna modify x to g here now i'm gonna download it we have to wait a bit until it downloads now that node.js is downloaded let's unzip it now we're gonna go into the folder itself and you're gonna copy everything to your user local so that you can use node the command is also on the page itself i copied it myself as well now to verify if node is installed correctly just run node minus v and npm minus v because we will need both node and npm and we have them installed correctly now we can proceed to install code server for that we need to use the install sh from the code server URL. You can also find these instructions on the code server GitHub page, but it's better to follow the ones that I posted because they are more clear and by following each step, you will end up with code server correctly installed. This will also take a while between 10 to 15 minutes. So let it roll. And once it's done, we can continue. Cool, now code server, it's already installed. Now we're just minutes away from being able to use code server. Next thing we need to do is to create the code server folder under the .config on your Pi and then under there we will create the config yaml file which will hold the configuration for code server. Here you will put the bind address 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 on port 8080 so that you, it can be exposed to the outside and here for the password you put whatever password you want to log into code server in my case i'm gonna put temporary raspberry just so that it's easy and i will show you how it works and that's it for this one next you'll need to create a code server service so that every time raspberry pi boots it starts the code server service so that you don't have to do it manually yourself so let's do that we create the code server .service file and under there you paste this and the only thing you need to change is the code server password. I'm going to, I just put raspberry in the config so I'm going to also put raspberry here. Once again choose your own password whatever you prefer. Now we need to reload the systemctl daemon so let's do that. Now let's start code server. So one thing to be careful of is that once you start, if you get an error, because I just got one, it took me a while to figure it out. And I'm going to modify the content of the service file on GitHub, so you won't need to worry about. But just so you know, in case it fails, here uh, we don't have the folder user bin code server. Thus, you just need to write code server and it will start correctly. So that's the only thing you need to do, basically. So I will modify this so that when you copy paste it into your own service file, you won't get the same problem I got, but just so you know, this is what happened. So I'm gonna exit this file. And now if I get the status of the code server, you see it's running, yeah? Now let's access it from our iPad. So now we go into Safari. So in Safari, I open a private tab because I already logged in. So I wanted to show you how it works without logging in. So when the first time you log in, so you go HTTP 10 5501 on port 8080. Here you just have to put your password, which is Raspberry in my case. And then boom, you see, we have code server, we can start already coding on the Raspberry Pi. So that's it. Basically, we have code server installed, we can run it from our iPad. One thing, if you want to add it to your desktop, so what you have to do is share, add to home screen. Here you can put whatever name you want and it will add it to your home screen. I'm going to cancel because I already have it. So let me just close this tab here and go back to the normal mode. And now basically you add it to your home screen, you have it as an icon here. You just click on it and it opens code server. 
and that's it and you can see that now you also don't see the other margins which are specific to safari so it really looks like you launched code server on your ipad the next steps from here is to install java or whatever other language you use on the code server it comes with python 2 and python 3 already so if you go and do python minus minus version you will see that it has python 2 and i think if we do python 3 minus minus version yeah it has also python 3.7 so you have already python installed you can already start coding python if you want java or something else just install it also to remember that whenever you will hook up your raspberry pi to your ipad code server will automatically start together with your raspberry pi i really hope that what i explained was clear enough and if not please leave your suggestions in the comments below it took me quite some time to set up everything as it wasn't easy as some tutorials presented to be. So if this helped you set up your Pi and you are able to now code on your iPad, please give this video a like as it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe and click the bell button to receive notifications as I release new content every week. I'm mostly focusing on algorithms and design patterns, but I will add new series to help you become a full stack, well-rounded software engineer. I will also add more fun projects and tutorials to also help you learn specific technologies and create a cool portfolio of projects. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.